Hello and welcome to another episode of I am on the northern part of uh, Pigeon Lake near the town of uh, Kawartha Lakes close to uh, Bob Cajun known for its uh, dairy, the Kawartha dairy for being mentioned and also known for being mentioned in one uh, great song by one great Canadian band from Ontario, Kingston. I'll let you guess which one. Uh, today I want to talk about what I consider one of the most efficient, uh, beautiful and meaningful Canadian interface, the canoe. Uh, behind me, you can see our own canoe, one of the 20 uh, Tom Thompson Special Edition Prospector canoes manufactured by Langford. Uh, but first, uh, I would like to respectfully acknowledge that I am located on the Treaty 20 Michi Saagig territory and in the traditional territory of the Michi Saagig and Chippewa nations, collectively known as the Williams Treaty First Nation, which include Curve Lake, Hiawatha, Aldeville, Skugog Island, Rama, Beausoleil, and Georgina Island uh, First Nations. <clears throat> I, respectfully, uh, I respectfully acknowledge that the Williams Treaty First Nation are the stewards and caretaker of these lands and waters in perpetuity and that they continue to maintain this responsibility to ensure the, their health and integrity for nature, generations to come. During my first summer in Canada back in uh, 1988, I was introduced to canoe kind of tripping by my wife Sheila and her brother Stephen. And since then, every year, as soon as uh, the weather permits it, uh, we make it. We make the time to go out on the water for an urban paddle on Lake Ontario in Toronto, or like here up north in the unique land of the Canadian Shield. Sometimes even with three generations, bringing fond memories of canoeing and camping in the stunning northern parts of Ontario with its uh, incredible network of and system of, of lakes and, and rivers. Gliding slightly with only a layer of Kevlar uh, covered with epoxy as the interface between us, our equipment and the water is such a satisfying sensation. There are traces of ancient dugout canoes and paddles at the four corners of our planet. But the modern Canadian canoe I have been using is the direct descendant of the North American indigenous design made of light wooden frame skin with tree bark, usually, uh, usually birch bark. One can find such specimens in many other different designs and styles at the Canoe Museum in Pribble, which by the way is fundraising for the construction of its new location which is right close by here so more than just a vehicle which permitted the exploration and expansion of the idea of Canada understood by the European settlers the canoe is to me the representation of an interface between several systems which shaped the country as we know it today for hundreds of years before the European arrived, the indigenous people were using these boats to travel, hunt, trade, fight. They knew how to navigate the systems of rivers and lakes with their tricky rapids and uh, sheltered bays. Quickly, the coureur de bois, uh, freemen, an outcast group of people interfacing between the Europeans and the indig indigenous people, linked to the origin of the Métis, these people saw these fast, easy to maneuver and portable boats could carry loads of cargo. As a trade post opened uh, along the intersection points between rivers and lakes, a system of com commerce dealing with animal pelts and other vital goods was born, expanding and pushing further and further west and north between the mid 1500s and 1800s. A good read I recommend is, and it's in French, it's uh, Histoire des Coureurs de Bois, Amérique du Nord, 1600, 1840, by Gilles Avar. 
Then more organized waves of settlers and colonizers kept coming from Europe, mostly France and England, bringing with them foreign diseases, religions, social and political systems. Subsequently and tragically, this wrote some of the darkest pages of Canadian history, made of broken treaties with the indigenous people, long repeated series of betrayals, eradication and assimilation campaigns. As we witness the trauma and stigmas left by these dark times, systemic racism is one of them today in modern uh, Canada. Another good read is The Marrow Thieves by Sherry Dimelin, uh, which I recommend. Today, Canada is organized by Aboriginal, municipal, provincial, and federal jurisdictions, regulating the laws and rules of these political systems. The respect and recognition of the indigenous nation as being its own, especially when it comes to education, policing, and justice system, is crucial to the future of Canada. I particularly would like to send a special message to the Thunder Woman Healing Lodge Society, which is a community-driven project raised out of concern and recognition of the need to break the cycle and support uh, the healing, rehabilitation, and meaningful reintegration of Aboriginal women offenders. A good read I recommend again is Dancing with a Ghost by Rupert Ross. The canoe is a symbol of a slow movement, slow traveling, which reconnects us with nature and the understanding of what Canada was before the European arrived. We are so lucky to still have relatively untouched, undeveloped, vast areas of land and systems of majestic lakes and rivers that should remain as such. The canoe is one interface that allows us to interact with the systems with relatively low ecological impact. It's funny to say, and it's funny I'm saying this as we can hear the motorboats around me. This was understood by the group of seven and Tom Thompson himself. Uh, this was understood by a painter called Kent Montman. I would like to uh, recognize and acknowledge uh, an artist called uh, Kent Montman. Uh, Kent uh, from the Cree Nation uh, has been doing some amazing work uh, for now more than uh, 20 years. Uh, very provocative uh, in a sense, sort of like a re reviewing, revisiting history and putting his own spin and looking at uh, uh, the history um, with the lens of uh, indigenous people and using uh, visual codes from uh, the uh, uh, classical paintings of, of European uh, artists. Um, it, you have a great example of that in, in, in this book called uh, Revision and Resistance, um, Wooden Boat People, uh, which was uh, which is a, basically the catalog of uh, Ken's uh, work at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in, in, in New York. Uh, <clears throat> and I um, don't know if I'm allowed to do this, can't uh, hope you will uh, excuse me but I mean this amazing work uh, this catalog uh, talks about uh, Kent's uh, uh, process uh, studies and then also great uh, reproductions and prints of, of his work we've been telling stories history in us being white people telling history totally uh, excluding uh, the point of view from the indigenous people uh, just the cover itself where you have a cutout of Washington showing through it um, Kent Monkman's alter ego uh, the, and character uh, that follows his work all along um, uh, Miss Chief uh, Eagle Testicle uh, that you find in pretty much every part of the work of Kent Monkman so follow his work go on his website uh, buy the book and uh, if he's in town and showing his work, uh, run to it. This is fantastic work. Hopefully during these experiences on the water, as we glide peacefully on the water, by the rhythm of the paddle strokes, 
we learn more about ourselves and our relationships with the land in this country. We learn to celebrate the indigenous roots and its rich and also relevant knowledge and heritage. Let's paddle together and let the first people of Canada take the lead to guide us. In 1613, the Haudenosaunee of today's New York State in the US made a belt of white and purple tubular shells representing two parallel rows to symbolize a treaty between them and the Dutch settlers. It is called the two-row wampum belt. The Haudenosaunee see the two-row wampum as a living treaty, a way that they have established for their people to live together in peace, that each nation will respect the ways of the others as they meet to discuss solutions to the issues that come before them. I will end this special episode of Fenêtre with this image of two ships, two canoes, sailing side by side on the same river of life as a hopeful wish, hopeful wish for tomorrow. That's it for this episode of Fenet and I wish you all the best. A bientôt.